everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we are reviewing Jean-Paul Gaultier classic Eau de Parfum. Now, for those of you who have watched my review of the Eau de Toilette, which I posted really not a long while ago, I actually unboxed it and reviewed it. I mean, you will know my love of the 90s and you could check out that review and the bottle was full when I opened it. But look at this. It's basically almost empty now. That's how much I love it. That's how much I use it. 100 ml. Poof. Gone. Gone also because obviously the conclusion is um, the Eau de Toilette newer formulation is not as powerful as it used to be in the 90s. Hence, you need more of it. But I'm the kind that loves to reapply anyway, so that's fine by me. Love, love, love the Eau de Toilette. I was never a big fan of the Eau de Parfum, though. Except now that... Uh, uh, now that Jean-Paul Gaultier is no longer with Prestige, but went to Antonio uh, Puig, which we found out through one of my uh, uh, subscribers is actually because the guys from Barcelona uh, should be pronounced as Puig. Anyway, thank you so much for that. But uh, if, so since it's been um, re-edited, uh, seems to have changed the smell quite a bit. Now this is also the Puig version, but... Uh, Still very, 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 very much the classic, classic in the Eau de Toilette form, except a bit watered down. Um, the Eau de Parfum was never really my thing. Now, the Eau de Parfum of uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's classic was released uh, after the Pure Perfume, which was the first one to come out, after the Eau de Toilette, which was the second to come out. So this one was released actually a couple of years after Jean-Paul Gaultier's uh, first two concentrations of Classique. And it has a different game going on for it. Now, this one has been cut at the bottom, so I don't have to peel this off. And I have already opened it, so we're just going to... It's always hard to open these cans. There you go. I'm just going to take it out. Uh, this is one of the last batches that was still made with the plastic holder. Now all of them have um, a velvety... Like the... Uh, you can check out the bottle of this one. It, it stands in a velvety red um, container at the bottom of the can. But this is how they used to be packaged in the past, except the plastic was full-on plastic. This one has holes now. Anyway, so you just kind of take it out and then out. And here you have the Gautier logo at the bottom. This is a 50 ml bottle. I wanted to try it out, so I got the smaller version because I'm not so sure I, was, I wasn't so sure I was going to like it. Well, let's see if I like it or not. It's still made in France. That's good because um, all of the new releases, all of the new fragrances coming out from Gautier are made in Spain, including the Scandal with all its already edited flankers and probably more flankers that are going to come out. So the biggest difference we notice between Classique Eau de Parfum now and from the past is the change of the outfit of this Bustier corset or Guépierre. Uh, now we have a red translucent coating on top of the glass with the rosy liquid inside. It used to be a laced type of outfit, asymmetrically placed all over the body. Um, that has changed now. Now, here's the first problem we encounter before we even get to spraying this, this fragrance. A lot of people are complaining or are confused. Let's just say confused. So the beginning of 2019 was the launch period for this particular red corseted version of the Eau de Parfum concentration. The Jean-Paul Gaultier team, you know... They did not announce a change, so they did not say if the the Eau de Parfum concentration is reformulated or not. Um, in some countries, it was actually gone for several months. Nobody knew if the Eau de Parfum was discontinued altogether. It was quite confusing, but then all of a sudden, this one pops up. Uh, it's not anymore in a golden can, but it's in a rosy, reddish, rosy can. The Eau de Toilette, mind you, in the meanwhile stayed exactly the same. The bottle is the same as it used to be with the frosted part of the corset. The can is still silver as it used to be. 
but the auto perform changed. Um, I found it complex in a bad way when it was still its old self with the laced corset. Now, uh, let's see how it is now. I have already tried it, but let's do it. Let's try it again. To pull this off, which doesn't want to go off so easily. So this is your stopper. Love it. The description of what these actually mean is in my other video, uh, the Jean-Paul Gaultier Classico de Toilette review. I explain in detail what these little um, imitations of lids are actually inspired by. So you could check that out. Link is in the description box down below and at the end of this video. So let's spray it on quickly here. I'm going to do it off camera because I don't want to get all of this wet with perfume. Just a second. Okay, three sprays. You can see it, it's all boozy wet. Okay. Um, hmm. So, what do we have here? We have a mandarin rum rose opening. Top notes, rum. Yes, rum. <laughs> mandarin and rose. Very, very interesting. Then we go into the middle notes with orchid and um, narcissus. And then we have in the base notes, sandalwood, tonka beans, amber and vanilla that's that's basically what it is the only addition mm, noted in the top notes different from the original version of the eau de parfum is the mandarin uh, sicilian mandarin to be precise uh not listed in the original formulation of it or the laced dressed version of it um what I find different, personally, is, well, before I get into the differences and similarities, let's just say, state that, again, this confusion is still all over the place. A lot of people do not know if this is a new formulation, if it's a flanker, if it's a, a totally different rendition of Classique altogether, because as we know, every season, Gautier comes out with different outfits for the bottles, slightly different variations of concentrations or formulations of the bottles. There is a Classique Eau Fraiche, for example, the Betty Boop bottle that I have. Very heavy on the ginger and on the sugar cane. It's still Classique, but much different from the Eau de Toilette. This one is heavier on the rum. So when I first spray it, it's kind of, it has reminiscence of the Betty Boop um, Eau Fraiche. Less sugar cane, like less of that cotton candy touch mixed with the ginger. And we, in fact, we don't have any ginger listed here, uh, even though I do smell it out. It's more the rum, but uh, it is so powerful. Um, and perhaps the absence of that gingery tone is what, I'm liking here, um, opposed to the ginger, we have that sandalwood, amber, tonka bean, uh, vanilla mix. It's very heavy and deep. And to me, it kind of completely covers up the rose. Now, when you first spray it out, and that was literally the second after I sprayed it out, and I don't know if the camera catches, but my skin is kind of still oily. It's a, there's an oily consistency to it. It's not just alcoholic. There's a heft to it. It smells like, a, like an 80s even, or 90s pure perfume. Not Classique pure perfume. I also have the pure perfume of Classique, and I have also reviewed it on my channel, so you could check that review out as well. This smells like another type of perfume. It's like a concept of a pure perfume from the 90s, even from the 80s, because it has that 80s heft to it. And this new rendition of it is really, really good. Really good. I definitely recommend it. I was very pleasantly surprised by it. And, and this is the funny thing. You see, it's... Um, different enough from the Eau de Toilette to warrant its own purchase, to warrant its own 
storyline, you know, within this soap opera, within this telenovela, this Gautier telenovela, you know, that is happening with all these, like, characters popping up. It's just like in Dynasty. They're all dressed with <laughs> with these tight corsets. They're all hyper sexy and they have all really strong characters. This one warrants its own role. Uh, and you can see even the way that they've colored the liquid... This one has a peachy tone to it, and this one is rose. It's very, very different. Very different. And um, they are telling us that these are different products. And even though you smell out the DNA of both of them and you know that they are classique, this one delivers a facet that is way more seductive. In fact, I would say the biggest difference between the two is that and I do still prefer the Eau de Toilette always, and this is why I'm going to tell you in a second, because the Eau de Toilette between the two, this one is more abstract. This one delivers an abstraction of fashion, an abstraction of a 90s fragrance, an abstraction of a concept fragrance. It is a concept fragrance because Gautier tells us that he wanted it to resemble theaters when he would go with his grandma to the theater, old theaters, dusty, still with residue of makeup and nail polish and varnish smelling in the air. Um, and it, in, a, in a weird way, this triggers memories, abstraction of memories, and it's just so wonderfully edgy that it's just sublime for me. It's just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I, I cannot praise this one enough, even in the newest form, which is this rendition of it uh, made in 2019 or 18. This one is not that abstract. It's, it's more clearly seductive. And um, I'm smelling it now. The head notes are completely gone. Uh, whatever was there of the rum is gone. Um, the rose is still there. Uh, the orchid slash narcissus. Again, I, how do orchids smell? It's a concept. It doesn't really smell. Most orchids just don't have a smell. Narcissus, hmm. It's like a concept of a flower mixed with the vanilla and the amber and the tonka bean and the sandalwood here. And, be, and there, you see, they've made the liquid rosy. They've dressed it in a red dress, corset, guépier, uh, whatever you want to call it. It, it's hot. It's sizzling hot. And I haven't hit the dry down yet, but when I tested it out a couple of days ago, uh, the dry down remembers, remembers, and it doesn't remember much. It reminds me, the dry down reminds me of Dolce Gabbana's first female release, their first, uh, pour femme, their first female fragrance with the red, uh, lid and the velvety red box. It has, and guess what? That one was also released in the nineties. So we're very close in terms of how fragrances were perceived and what were notions and concepts of fragrances back then, um, what was deemed sexy and what not, what was deemed seductive, what not. Uh, the red Dolce Gabbana velvet packaging and perfume within have a similarity to not the entire fragrance, Classico de Parfum, but the dry down. The dry down hits a bubble, a lacquered bubble of gummy pleasure, which is what Dolce Gabbana's perfume was when it was first released by Euro Italia. It is not produced by Euro Italia anymore, by the way. So it's a different smell today, but um, this one uh, comes close to it. Now, Euro Italia produced in Italy. These guys are produced in France, or these ladies are produced in France. Well, or guys, you never know nowadays. Gender is... Uh, it's just a concept you can play with, really. But, um, so, they're so similar in terms of being Gautier. You know, you recognize the quality of a Gautier fragrance, but they're different enough to warrant different storylines. I would say, mm, it's as if we could put the Betty Boop bottle here, right? And... That's more the gingery sugar cane. It's like this is the heart because it came first. 
and its ginger aspect is developed further here with the Betty Boop Eau Fraiche. And then we have its more warm, rose, ambery, vanilla accords kind of kicking in here and developing those facets more and creating a hotter, more sizzling fragrance uh, on, on, on this end. So it all kind of veers back to the core, which is this one. Well, actually, the core would be the pure perfume, but the pur pure perfume is a beast on its own. And you could, as I said before, check out that review in um, um, also on my channel done uh, many moons ago. What is also fascinating to note is Gautier's participation and love for his fragrances. He did not design the fragrance. Um, Jacques uh, Cavalier is the nose behind Classique. Jacques Cavalier is also listed as the nose behind this rendition of Classique Eau de Parfum, as well as the first Eau de Parfum. So we can deduct our, we could make our conclusions and say, okay, well then it, it maybe is the same fragrance or the same perfumer kind of approved of it, but you never know with the rights, who holds the rights to these fragrances and how these names are then attributed. Uh, he might not have formulated the new ingredients of the Eau de Parfum, but his name is still bond to it, maybe per contract. You never, we, we just don't know these things. These are things that are um, locked in non-disclosure agreements of, from companies uh, to these artists or people working on these perfumes. And of course, Jacques uh, Cavalier maybe didn't even formulate it alone. There was probably a team of people working on it, but they don't even get credited. So, but what is fascinating is that um, we have a person with a name who's attributed the design of the actual smell of the fragrance. Then we have another artist or designer or illustrator. I don't really know who he is. Uh, Saint Gobain. So, you know, spelled like saint, and then G-O-B-A-I-N, Gobain. Saint Gobain is the designer of the bottle, not Gautier, but Gautier is the designer of the can. <laughs> this is so funny. I love how Gautier then goes like, I want to design the packaging. I love the metal bottles. That's so cute. You gotta love Jean-Paul Gautier. He's just, I, I really, he's adorable, adorable. Anyway, Jean-Paul Gautier designed the can which is actually the most appealing and attractive part of this whole concept of this of this perfume uh, to me it's the only perfume that is actually sold in these inside it protects the bottle from not moving around you could take this out actually and then you can have this as a can and put stuff in it pens or whatever they're just so beautiful then you have the on the foil you get the uh, drawing or a photo depicting what product is going to be inside the can. That is also really good to know. A lot of perfumes don't do that, so you don't know what's inside. So Gautier designed the can. Saint-Gobain designed the bottle. And Jacques Cavalier uh, designed the fragrance. So, plus now we have this Antonio Puig family or company... Um, distributing and producing these fragrances, that's a fourth name. So, you know, a lot can go wrong. If too many people cook a soup, things can go terribly wrong. Did it go wrong in this case? Personally, for me, it, no, nothing went wrong. It's such a great, great smell. And, um, again, this one is, because it's so seductive, it's more for the evening. This one is all the time in the morning, afternoon, evening, night. This one is just so abstract and playful. This one is this one is like Kate Moss. You know why I say that? Because Kate Moss is um, a model that is so versatile. She's like a blank canvas. And in fact, she's one of those rare models whose um, advertisement campaigns can be seen all over Main Street advertising at the same time for different brands. And even though it's her and she's so recognizable as Kate Moss, you still think it's a different... She's still so blank of a canvas that she can deliver the concept for every design, every brand she's working for in a different way. Even though she might even have the same facial expression, it's still, she's so flexible and versatile that we imprint on ourselves the concept of what that brand is delivering through her in a different way because of their marketing. That's how versatile she is, and that's one of the main reasons why she is such an incredible and the best, in my opinion, model of the world. She's just that nobody else can do that. No other model can be seen in one street on four different billboards advertising for four totally different 
products and brands without it clashing, but she can. So to me, the eau de toilette is Kate Moss. It's just that versatile. It's that blank canvas. And in fact, even the bottle with its um, iced kind of a, a corset or guepier is, um, is just that versatile. Here we're going more towards, this is more, eh, this would be more somebody, hmm, who could this be more? I don't want to say Naomi Campbell. It could be more Naomi. She's more specific. But maybe Turlington. Maybe a Turlington. Maybe maybe it's more, or, hmm, who else could it be? I don't want to say Claudia Schiffer, because Claudia is too blonde for this. This is a, it's a darker... It's a darker scent, uh, but it's way more specific, you know? You can't really... Um, it's not as versatile. I don't know, it's another model, but this is Kate Moss for sure. And that's why I suggest having both, actually. Because with this one, you could play more. And with this one, you're just... You have to be ready for it. And I love fragrances that demand that of you you know they demand you to be ready for it and when you're ready for it psychologically you go for it and that's just the magic of of really good perfumes to me and this one delivers i just hope that they don't reformulate it i hope that they don't start producing it elsewhere you can see for now it's still made in france it's really hard to see at the bottom of the bottle but at the bottom of the packaging you can see it again where does it stay there made in france um Try it out, you guys. Test it out. It is soapy, too. You know, there's like a warmth to it, which is super strange. This kind of abstraction of... So it's warm and hot, but also soapy and clean. But it's nasty, too, because it kind of tells you like, okay, yeah, I, we could start the night off clean, but I'm ready to get really dirty with you. So it's, it's just that playful, too. And it doesn't take itself too seriously, which is the most important part of anything that actually Gautier does, including his fragrances and the design of his bottles and the whole concepts of his advertisement campaigns. He loves to have fun. And we've, we're forgetting how to have fun with anything nowadays. Everything is so politically correct. Everything is so limited to, ah, don't you dare say that because it could be misinterpreted, misunderstood. Somebody might get offended, heaven forbid, uh, you know. But then again, the perception of everything is up to you. What offends me might not offend you and vice versa. And being able to laugh about certain mistakes, errors, or being able to laugh about just not, actually, not even about mistakes, just being able to laugh about not being perfect and enjoying our flaws is what the Gautier concept is all about. And I love that. He's one of the only designers that actually brings all ages to the runway, all shapes, forms, and sizes from really skinny to really, you know, chunky. And they all look so beautiful and voluptuous in their own way. And all ages are represented. And all skin types are represented. And everybody's just having fun. Embracing who you are and embracing all those flaws, all the scars, everything you might have and enjoying it, just enjoying it and laughing at it as well, because laughing at it also takes away the stigma, takes away the whole concept of the shame. You don't have to be ashamed for anything that's a part of you, never. And don't let anybody make you feel that way either, because it's just not natural to force yourself in an unnatural state of being. And the unnatural state of being would be a state in which you do not tolerate or accept, or you do not embrace who you are. How unnatural is that? That is the most unnatural of things, is to just completely reject yourself. And Gautier is all about the opposite of that. It's about embracing yourself. And the fun thing about all of these bottles and uh, these perfumes is that it re keeps reminding me of how playful it is because he, he mixes it up. He, he puts the sweet with the slightly bitter, he puts the powdery with the dry, he puts the soapy with the seductive dirty at the same time. Everything is mixed and everything is possible. And the fact that everything is possible is exactly the reason why his perfumes are so classique, as he names them, these in particular. Why? Because they're classic, timeless fragrances, because everything is constantly possible and they keep you guessing. And that is the most you can expect for any fragrance, despite the fact that these are synthetic, what have you, still, they deliver. 
a dreamy state where they make me smile. And God knows that's hard nowadays. To make me smile these days, it ain't that easy. But uh, Jean-Paul, you managed. So thank you so much for that. And um, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this review. Uh, I hope it was bubbly because this perfume smells so bubbly. Mm, I'm smelling it now. Uh, it's, it's just so much fun. I'm really in the mood for more Gautier. So bring it on, Jean-Paul. Bring it on. Thumb up this video if you liked it. And let me know what you think about these classic forms, formulations, the outfits that the bottles wear, whatever have you, all the playfulness that goes along with it in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. Super Decobal spelled together. Thank you so much to all my patrons who have already pledged. You keep the channel alive. And also, check out Ask Decob, the YouTube show where you get to call in and talk to me live in the studio. And all that ends up in a show where you ask me questions and we talk about all sorts of topics that are of interest. The link to that is also at the end of this video and also in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much. Until my next video, don't ever forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.